one. One shot for the kill, the breeze cut, freeze up, straight drop, and the kills are talking. What's going on everybody? So, something a little bit different for today, guys. Today, I'm going to be talking about Raptor Liner. Okay, so some of you are probably going, what the hell is Raptor Liner? You've never heard of it before, and I'm sorry you haven't heard of this stuff because it is awesome. But basically, Raptor Liner is a 2K polyurethane coating, and it's a textured finish, and it's also an extremely durable finish. You can just spray it on any surface, and it will stick really well. But for the longevity, and the proper finish, it does take time. Not as much as a normal paint job, but it's still a hell of a job. Now, as you can see in this footage here, the vehicle is completely stripped down. Now, this car came into me completely dressed. It had roof rack, front bar, rear bar, side step, scrub bars. It had a lot of gear on it, guys, and I had to completely strip that down because we need to get access to every part of the vehicle possible. So the surface is completely stripped down. Now, as you can see here, I am prepping the surface for the application of the paint. Now, you don't want any shiny spots on the paintwork. That is the biggest thing with Raptor Liner. It needs a good abrasive surface to stick to. So you need to rough it up with at least 140 grit sandpaper or something like that. 140, 240 is also fine to get started with, but you really just need to get rid of that shiny finish and make it nice and abrasive. Now, this can be difficult in certain hard to reach areas. So you can get sanding pads from U-Pole Raptor Liner that make this super easy. So they're actually sandpaper, soft pads that are flexible to get into all those hard to reach areas. I swear by them and I use them for pretty much every job that I do now. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm just going back over the panels and making sure there's no shiny spots or anything that I've missed. I'm just giving it a really good sand with the soft orbital sand here to make sure that it's all even across the board after doing a hand sand. Now you can also notice there that I've used some primer on a spot where I've taken it down to bare metal. That's where the stickers were on the bottom of the doors and I needed to make sure that I got all of that sticker gunk off and some of it went down to not quite bare metal, but it got pretty thin. And some spots will do that. That's that, that happens when you're sanding a panel down, guys. But you just need to put some primer over it and it'll be perfectly fine. So make sure you prime those areas. Okay, so once you've finished doing all your priming, your sanding, and you've taped up all the windows or anything you don't want to get paint on, make sure you do that. Even you can see the wheels are covered in this, uh, in this footage here. Now, that is really important because this stuff sticks like sh to a blanket and anything you don't want it to stick to it will stick to so if it's in the area cover it with something guys make sure you do that okay so once you've done that you've prepped the panels now you've got them ready for paint but before you put the raptor coating on you need to make sure those panels are clean so what i normally do is get the air gun and i air gun the whole thing down to get all the loose dust particles off it and out of those hard to reach areas and the crevices and things like that so once you've done that you need to make sure you use a wax and grease remover or a degreaser and wipe down every single panel every single crevice every single spot needs to be clean you need to make sure of this, otherwise the Raptor liner won't stick very well and it will eventually lift off. If you have any shiny spots or corners which are hard to get to to sand and all that sort of stuff, they still need to be clean, but you can use Raptor liners adhesive promoter. It's called a Grip 4 and that is really important to use. I pretty much use it on any of the curved areas on a vehicle regardless of how well I've sanded it. I always just put a line of it down on any of those areas just to help the Raptor liner stick to those sort of areas that are hard to reach or even high touch areas and things like that. Okay, so now it's time to mix the Raptor Liner. Now, Raptor Liner is a three to one mixing ratio of hardener. Okay, so that's all written on the box in the instruction manual and the hardener is supplied with each kit. So it makes it nice and easy to use the proper stuff that you're meant to with the Raptor Liner. If you're tinting Raptor Liner, it's a 10% tint ratio. Okay, so you just follow that with a measuring cup and you'll be fine. Now, the other thing I want to mention is some people talk about using gravity fed guns and things like that to get different textures. It's not a bad option, but you do have to reduce the Raptor liner down, thin it out to use a gravity fed gun with a bigger nozzle. This can cause durability problems with the Raptor paint itself and how thin it is and things like that for the end result. I think for interiors and things like that and, and not places that need to be super durable and again are going to cop a lot of damage or hits, especially on a four wheel drive bar work, you can thin it down. That's no problems at all. I personally never thin down Raptor liner. I think it's perfect out of the box. You really just need to get your pressures right out of your, out of your spray gun. I generally shoot anywhere from 60 to 80 PSI. And you need to make sure that you're standing the right distance away and using the right gun. 
So you do get a standard Schultz gun with the kits most of the time, and there's nothing wrong with that. It does a great job. The best gun on the market to spray Raptor liner with is the Raptor liner Very gun. What that has is basically an adjustable nozzle on the end of the gun, and this makes light work of applying Raptor liner. Trust me, it is worth every bloody cent getting one of these things. Okay, so now it's time to spray on the Raptor liner. You need to make sure that you spray all of the hard to reach areas first. So all the spots that are basically going to get neglected when I do a normal spray job, side to side and all that sort of stuff, I'm spraying them first to make sure that they get a good build. Because what you'll find if you don't do this now, when you finish the spray job, you might see a little bit of the original paintwork showing through because that spot is naturally not going to get as much paint as everywhere else. So start with those areas first, the hard to reach areas, and you won't have any issues. Now, if you're painting the door jams, you want to make sure you start there with the inside of the doors and the door jams and inside the bonnet, uh, barn door area, things like that. You need to start there because guys, this is going to be where you need to target a lot of Raptor liner. It's a high touch area and you're going to want to get a good coat on there no matter what. So start there and then work on the outside, the easier parts of the vehicle. So now you need to continue doing a light coat over the rest of the panel work. Now, this isn't a covering coat. You just need to basically get a bit of Raptor liner sprayed on the panels. It doesn't matter if there's a bit of the original color showing through still. This is just the first coat. So just a nice light coat. Now, the distance that you're standing away from the vehicle is basically going to determine the texture and the build quality of the paint. So I recommend testing this on a, on a test panel before you start painting the car to get your desired finish on both the very gun and also your distances and your pressure of the gun itself. Although on the first coat, you can play around with this. You can change distances a little bit uh, and it's not going to be too bad because you've still got two coats to go and also a dust coat, <laughs> but we'll get onto that in a sec. And you're going to find out that you run out of Raptor liner relatively quickly, guys. Um, the bottles feel like there's a lot of paint in there, but it doesn't go as far as you'd think. So you will find yourself mixing up bottles halfway through a spray job, and that's fine. You know, that's perfectly fine. Make sure you give them a really good shake, though. That makes all the difference. Alrighty, guys, so we've done the first coat of Raptor liner, a nice light coat just to give it a build and start the process. Now, you need to leave this dry for at least 45 minutes. I personally like to let it dry, or uh, well, the flash time, they call it, sorry, the flash time for at least an hour to an hour and a half if I can allow for it. I just find this to be better, and it gives it a better chance to set and get ready for the next layer of paint. Rightio, it's time for the second coat, and this is really where you're going to start seeing things come together. Now you notice here that I'm using a bit of a sweeping motion, flicking the gun at the edge so I don't leave any lines on the panel that I'm painting, and you really want to start making sure that you keep the distance you're standing away from the vehicle at this point on the second coat even. You don't want to start moving in closer or further away because this is starting to build the final finish of your paint job. And you also want to make sure that you're overlapping the panel on each spray that you do, you want to overlap by 50%. You don't just want to do a spray and then go directly below it. You will leave a line. You need to cover it by 50% over each spray that you do, okay? Keep that even across the board. It will make all the difference on the finished product. Okay, and don't forget guys, hit those hard to reach areas. Make sure you get that bonnet a good covering on it and the roof as well and all of the gutters and inside the window jams and all that sort of stuff. You need to pay special attention to these parts which might not stand out but are still very important. Alrighty, so I personally do four coats of Raptor liner on anything I paint. Now, they do vary a little bit, they're not all the same. The first one's obviously that light coat, second one's a covering coat, and the third one's basically my finishing coat, making sure that it's very even across the board. Now, the fourth one is where it all comes together. This is what I call the dust coat. Now, the dust coat basically means that I'll stand further back from the vehicle, or the panel, or the bar work, or whatever you're painting, and just drop a nice, even coat across the whole thing. And this is going to make sure that it covers up any slight imperfections that are left um, or any imperfections that you might have in your panel. This will really help blend things in, guys, and make it look very uniform across the board. But you also have to remember this will change the texture. Now, I've done a lot of work in those first coats to make sure the texture isn't too rough. So when I do the dust coat, it stays extremely fine by the end result. So play around with this on your own panel and try and get it down pat. But I do recommend doing a dust coat, not only for the finish, the evenness on the panel, but also for the durability.
Okay, so this is some first person shooter angles that I use my Lumix. This isn't a GoPro, this is a proper camera <laughs> that I used to do some angles that are a bit different, had a bit of fun with it. I'm finishing up the door jams. So nice high build on the door jams, doing a lot of coats and making sure that they're going to stand up to the test of time. And that pretty much wraps up the paint job now, guys. So what's left to do after you do the paint job is make sure you rip the tape off almost straight away. Give it a little bit of dry, dry time if you want to, but within 45 minutes to an hour, make sure you rip off all the tape on the panels. Otherwise, that will pull up some of the Raptor if it's you know gone across onto the tape and things like that. It can, it can cause you dramas. So better just to pull it off now if you're happy with the end result. If not, do another coat. And then from there, put everything back together. I'm not going to go through that in this one. I'm not going to do the whole process because it took ages to rebuild this color. There was so many bits and pieces to put back on it, but the end result was absolutely something special. So I'll show you a few photos overlapping this now of the end result and certain things. And I'll also put a video of the customer driving off in the car now. So that looks really good in the different lights hitting the panels. It changes color a little bit. It's also a little bit of fleck in this one. So it gave a little bit of a shine uh, when it hits the light in certain spots. So end result guys, absolutely unreal. The customer was stoked with it as well and all was good. This is just one of the cars that I've painted, guys, and something that I really wanted to share with you on how the process happens. And sorry I didn't go into much detail on it like I normally would start to finish showing you absolutely everything. Maybe I'll do one with my tub on the Navara. I'll paint the tub. I've been meaning to do it, so I might get in and do that, and that'll give me a smaller project, and I might be able to show you guys how to mix it, a bit more in-depth process on the gun, displaying how it all works and things like that as well. So stay tuned for that one, guys. I'll make that happen. I'll do something soon for you, and and uh, paint the tub of my Navara. I'm turning dreams into reality. In the lab with the formula and chemistry. The memories spark and motivate and make the industry shake. We put the bars in the place. I'm talking one, one chance at best. Yes, painting pictures for the culture, keep the brushes fresh. Flip the cover with the drum of passion.